Well, hey guys, uh, we're back. Turnkey Product Management. It's uh, I'm Jeff Lieber, and say hello, Jenna. Hey guys. Hey. So yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, different strategies that we use for our clients to grow sales quickly on Amazon. So hopefully you can take these if you're already selling on Amazon yourself, you can take some of these strategies and hopefully it'll grow your sales. And if you're not on Amazon yet, it's good to see the potential of what, what, you know, how easy it is to get, get sales growth on Amazon. And so hopefully this will be helpful for you guys. So, um, yeah, let's jump right in. All right. So, um, you know, at Turnkey, we like to test a ton of different sales strategies. Um, in our opinion, sales strategies are what sets all the Amazon sellers apart from one another. Um, different strategies will work, you know, for some different categories. They won't work for others. So it's important to test different ones out and see what works best. Uh, and then, in our opinion, you find what works best for you, and then you expand on it. You grow it. So a few that we like are split testing, marketing inserts, giveaways, uh, tiered promotions, taking advantage of the holidays, uh, and retargeting through Facebook. Uh, I guess, you know, the, the thought process you can have when looking at this presentation is how can we take that to the next level? Cool. So we'll dive deeper on some of those topics. So split testing, you've probably heard of it before. Um, it's not a new concept, but it's something that is easily missed, easily neglected. Maybe you did it once and it was, you know, 18 months ago and you haven't tested something different since then. Um, so split testing, so for some people, it can, you know, some people will overcomplicate it. Um, it's best just to keep it simple. Like literally, uh, one of the best and easiest things to split test is price, you know, because it's so simple to do. So let's say you, you know, originally priced your product at 50 bucks flat. You know, you may want to just do a test at 49.99. You may be surprised, um, you know, how much of a difference that that one penny <laughs> can make. Um, or maybe, you know, 59.99 and, and give yourself an extra ten dollars of margin. Maybe you're, you're you know, the price elasticity is not what you thought that it would be. Um, or maybe on Amazon, there's this uh, feature where you can, um, you've probably seen it where it, like it lists the, the MSRP or the list price, and then it slashes through it, right? And then it says sale price, right? Like, and it looks like, oh my gosh, it's on sale today. And people think that, and then they're like, wow, I'm getting a good deal. Well, what, what most customers don't know is that like on Amazon, you can have a sale year, year round every day it's on sale, right? Um, and, and you know that's, that's one of those things that, that some people miss. So make sure that that's set up. It's a really effective way. Um, you can test different promotions, coupon codes, discounts, uh, see what works. Do people like a buy one, get one offer or do they like a, you know, 10% off two or more. Um, they're all going to have different levels of effectiveness and, you know, you do have to measure uh, the results. Um, split testing your images and sales copy. Those are also good. I think the, the main image is the, is one of the biggest uh, influence factors on the page. And so that's a great one just to try swapping out your main image for something else that you want to test to see what gets click throughs, what gets sales. Um, and yeah, and again, like some people ask like, well, how, how long do I need to do the split test for? Um, there's no like hard and fast rule. Um, you know, there's no perfect way to do it. It's, it's really like, it, you know, it depends on how much volume you're doing. If, if you're already doing, you know, thousands of dollars per day, then, you know, you'll get a lot of da good data in, within a few days or a week. So we usually like to do a test for about a week period or maybe a two week period so that you get the full um, you know, every single day of the week, because um, keep in mind that like weekends are often uh, much different than weekdays. Like, so, you know, the, the traffic on Amazon, what we've seen is, is for most markets is that uh, the weekdays are actually bigger than the weekends. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, people like shopping on Amazon while they're at work, I think. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and so that's why it, it, it is a good rule of thumb if you can to like do a full seven day test. So you get that, you know, seven days at forty nine ninety nine and seven days at 50 bucks, measure the conversion rate, measure the total, you know, revenues and profits. Um, 
And yeah, and, but don't get too, you know, hopefully there's, there should be a significant difference in answer. Um, and then once you pick the winner, then, then stick with that and then maybe try testing something else or maybe try raising the price again. Um, or maybe now it's time to test the image. And it is best to test like one variable at a time. Don't, don't change eight things because um, then you won't be able to identify what caused it. So do keep it simple with just one variable at a time. So hopefully uh, that's helpful. Yeah, definitely. And I love split testing. It's amazing. So uh, another thing that we love using is marketing inserts. Um, this is kind of a topic not many people talk about. Uh, so we kind of wanted to bring it up today. Uh, so marketing inserts are kind of a cool way to just interact with the customers buying your products, right? This is free real estate for you. This is a great opportunity for you to put this in your packaging. Um, we do recommend making sure you're staying in Amazon terms of service. So you know, making sure it doesn't look, you know, it gray area, I guess. So, you know, what we recommend is adding value to the customer that can be saying, Hey, here's a free ebook or here's a promo code to use on your next purchase on Amazon. Um, you know, it could also be follow us on Pinterest, follow us on Facebook for more deals on Amazon, you know, kind of make sure you're including Amazon in those uh, marketing inserts. So you're within their terms of service. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is super easy. This is a cool little surprise for everyone that buys your product. Uh, we highly recommend using it. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make sense to not. So that's, that's kind of our thought process on marketing inserts. Great. So I'm going to talk about review generation strategies. So Amazon uh, has changed a lot over the years. Uh, you know, we, we've been selling on Amazon for over like five years now and Back in the day, there was almost no regulations on reviews. People could just buy reviews. You know, there was review groups and all of these uh, strategies to get fake reviews really fast and get big numbers. Uh, Amazon has really cracked down on a lot of that stuff. And it's actually a good thing um, because these people were coming in with, with products that are not great products, but they would just buy reviews you know from overseas or whatever using robots and, and and doing crazy stuff to get a thousand reviews in three months and then all of a sudden your hundred natural reviews looks like a crappy product relative to these these guys that bought their way to the top and so um so don't be scared off it's actually a good thing because it's keeping the integrity of the marketplace and um and it's you know you have to be a real you know, company to, to have to be successful on Amazon. You have to be, you know, have a really great product um, and give a good customer experience and all of that. So, you know, that's what you want to focus on. So, um, so one thing that we like to do with all of our clients is like, you, you want to do a, a self evaluation for what are your greatest assets at your company? Maybe you have 50,000 Facebook or Instagram followers, or maybe you don't, maybe you don't have that at all, but you do have, you know, uh, 400 e email addresses on your email list. That's a great start. Um, and so look at what your assets are because you can tap that list to try to, you know, get sales because those are your trusted followers and customers. And then, um, you know, give them a, you know, a promotion or something and, and drive sales through Amazon. And then you get an, you know, an Amazon verified purchase review if you can follow up with them through like an autoresponder and say, hey, thanks for buying. Would you mind helping out, uh, leaving a review? We're trying to gain feedback right now. Um, and just having like an authentic message, a great customer experience and, and helping the customer uh, as much as you can without, you know, pestering them. And uh, so yeah, so those are some of the basic ways. Um, but like test out different stuff. There's, there's a lot of ways to get creative. And, you know, like Jenna said earlier, what we do is, you know, once you find something that works, do expand on that, do that a hundred times more, you know? Um, and yeah, what else? I mean, basically like if you're just concentrating on the customer experience and really creating a great experience for them, delivering great customer service or support if they need it, um, the reviews will come naturally, like focus on building raving fans and, um, and, and the, the reviews will, will follow. Um, so that's, uh, you know, there's a lot more we could get into on that for <laughs> hour, but uh, for the sake of time, we'll just, we'll move on for, for now. 
Yeah. So we'll move on to Amazon promo codes and I mean, not promo codes, promos. Um, and with promos, I mean, again, test, test, test. Uh, different promos will work for different products in a different way. Uh, you know, different categories have different regulations like supplements, for example, you can't participate in giveaways, you know, so there are different regulations you need to make sure um, you're meeting with your product. Um, you know, it's finding the right promotion, finding the right process, finding the right time to have the promotion. Uh, and it, it is, it does involve testing, you know, so here are a few of our favorites. So we love giveaways. Uh, they're not talked about very often. Uh, so it's pretty simple. Uh, basically you give away uh, a quantity of your products. Um, one to 30 is the max. Um, and then it's advertised on the Amazon giveaway page. And what's really cool about it is uh, when there's a winner and there's a loser, you know, so there'll be, you know, if you give away 30, there's 30 winners, but everyone else that loses gets a promo code to use on your page. So it helps increase sales. Uh, another cool bonus is it, you can connect it to your YouTube video. And for a lot of our clients, we'll see a bump in their YouTube video by thousands of views. Uh, which is pretty cool for them and they get to create a new message there. So it's, it's pretty awesome, um, you know, promo. Uh, and it's also cool for them to circle back and use the promo and help with sales. Uh, so we really love using it. It's not used too often. So it's a cool opportunity. Uh, another promo we like using is tiered promotion. So it's buy one, get one, five, buy one, get 5% off, buy two, get 10% off, buy three, get 50% off. Uh, this is pretty cool because it helps with your conversion, helps increase your sales, obviously. Um, another cool thing is if you have different products, so, you know, let's say you have different colors or something like that. If you're doing the tiered promotions, you will actually bump up that frequently bought together and make that, you know, a possibility. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And, you know, like I said, increase your sales. Uh, so then the next thing that we like to use my personal favorite, coupon clippings. So coupon clippings were introduced in November, uh, pretty cool timing for the holidays. And um, you know, they're a little different than promotion codes. Uh, so promotion codes, they're at the bottom of the page and a customer has to copy the promo code and then they would paste it at checkout. But the coupon clipping is pretty cool because it's right there next to the price in a bright green box and a customer just presses click coupon, clip, coupon and then it goes straight to their cart so when they buy it 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 will immediately be added they don't have to you know copy and paste a promotion code so it's more likely to be used as well so to run one of these coupon clippings it costs 60 cents plus the promotion um, that you're running so if it's two dollars it will cost you two dollars and sixty cents every single time it's used but you're also paying for extra visibility you're giving Amazon that 60 cents to be featured on their coupon clipping page, which gets you more visibility to your listing, you know, gets more people there and it'll help with your advertising budgets, things like that. So it's pretty cool with the coupon clippings. We definitely recommend using them. We've definitely seen more success with the coupon clippings than we have with promo codes, which is pretty cool. Uh, so like I said, you have to test, you have to see even with the coupon clippings, is it better to have a dollar amount off or is it better to have a percentage off? Different clients we've seen percentage off actually works better, but with others, only the dollar off makes sense. A lot of times the percentage off won't be used. So it is very interesting to see how you make those differences and how you make those changes um, from promotion to promotion. I have a question on that. Uh, yeah. 60 cents per redemption. I th we, we confirmed, I think that um, it's not, per time someone uses it, but actually some, if only if they go and check out and actually purchase it with it, right. that's the only time you're charged. They might clip it and then, you know, add it to the card and think about it or whatever. And, you know, go eat a sandwich and come back and then forget about <laughs> it. You, I believe you don't pay 60 cents if that happens, right? Yeah, that's correct. Sorry. Yeah. Just to clarify, it's only if they purchase it, will you be charged that, you know, $2.60 or $1 or whatever it is. That's the only time you will be charged. Yeah. And that's awesome because it's basically like risk-free and, and then for the, yeah. And then for the $2 or whatever, um, that's not too bad. I mean, you're not actually being charged it. You're just like, it's being deducted from the sales price, I think. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, th th those are, those have been working really well. Not everybody is using those right now. So it's good to jump in on that. Cool. Definitely. All right. So 
PPC optimization. So Amazon has an incredible Amazon advertising network. It's like their own Google ads, Google AdWords, right? Or it's like Facebook ads. So Amazon has their own platform and it is one of the most powerful, uh, you know, like most effective advertising mediums that, that I've ever seen. I've used Facebook ads before. I've used YouTube and all that good stuff. Um, use Google. But the beauty of, of uh, like to, just a quick comparison. So a Facebook ad, if you're say selling a, you know, whatever, a, a dog brush, right? Um, and if, if you're trying to sell that on Facebook, yes, you can have great success with that. And people do, I'm sure. But you're basically putting a distraction ad in front of somebody who's not on Facebook trying to shop for your, your dog brush. You are trying to interrupt them from what they're trying to enjoy on Facebook, which is family and friends and whatever they're trying to do, watch cat videos or whatever people are doing these days. And so you're trying to interrupt them and give them an offer and that's great and it might work. Um, and it can, you should still do that. Um, but on Amazon, it's so much, they're so much more ready to buy and it's keyword based, it's query based. And so what that means is if, you know, we can, we can advertise on anything dog brush related or dog related. So someone is going to go to Amazon and you're going to search for as a customer, Oh, dog brush, right. Or dog brush cleaner, something like that. And when you, when you type that in, there's going to be 20, you know, listings there to choose from. And if you're not on page one, because maybe you only have five reviews because you just launched, you're going to have a really hard time getting naturally organically ranked on page one. However, you can pay to play. You can pay to get up on the top of the page or on the sidebar or on the bottom bar of page one. And that's by advertising. So you might pay 20 cents per click or 60 cents per click to get up there. Um, and Jenna put some good uh, photos there. You can see like those ones she's highlighted, those are actually advertisements. And they and Amazon does a great job of making them look like a like an every other product listing. You don't actually, most customers, like my mom still doesn't know. I've explained to her a hundred times, like mom, that's an ad. And she's like, no, Jeff, it, it was on the page. I'm like, no, that's a, that's an advertisement, but you know, but customers don't care because it, it's a irrelevant product and they're, they're looking to buy a dog brush right now. And if you want to show up in front of them and you can pay to show up and be the first or second or third result. And those customers are ready to buy. They're not trying to research dog brushes most of the time. They're, they want to buy it. Their credit card is already on file with Amazon. They're probably a prime member. If you're prime eligible, cause you're using FBA's Amazon fulfillment by Amazon warehouses, you'll be prime eligible and you have a very good chance of converting that sale at a profitable margin. Um, and that's what we do with most of our clients. We use, we, we use them for all of our clients. We recommend them whether you do it yourself, um, or you hire someone like us or, or somebody to manage your campaigns because um, they do need to be watched, but definitely test out campaigns on the advertising front. Um, it's really good strategy. Um, and you know, I mean, it would take five hours uh, to, to really like give you a, a detailed, you know, step-by-step -step overview of how to set them up and how to optimize them and do all of that. But um, so maybe we can cover that in a future lesson or I, I, we, we have some free advertising lessons, I think, um, on, on our website. So you could check those out if you're trying to set them up. Um, but, uh, or you can email us and we can try to share some, uh, so, some trainings that we have. Um, but definitely like at, at a high level, what you should do is go in and there's two types of campaigns in Seller Central. One is called an automatic campaign. I would recommend starting with that. It's the easiest. Just just select an automatic campaign and set that up. And Amazon will actually um, Amazon will actually create the uh, the ads for you. And they will Amazon will choose what keywords to bid on because Amazon can look at your listing and scrape it, and they can determine what keywords to bid on based on your keyword optimization and your title and in your bullets and everything. And they'll actually kind of do it for you. And that's the best way to start. It's, so, it's really simple. You can do that you know, by yourself. Um, where it gets a little bit more complicated is what's called the manual campaigns. And that's where you have to set them up. You want to organize them in an organized fashion, maybe dog brush, you know, 
high, high dollar terms, like the most directly related terms. Maybe you want another longer tail uh, keyword bucket, um, or maybe you're targeting, you know, dog fur products or shedding products or, you know, words that are not exactly your product, but like they're, they're related. So there's, you know, we, we typically will set up hundreds or thousands of keywords um, for just one product for, for our clients. And, and you can do that too through keyword research. And once you set them up, then, then what you got to do is make sure that you, you, uh, you monitor them and optimize the bids, uh, change the, uh, the bidding amounts and, and, you know, make sure that you're not going deep into the red and losing a ton of money super fast. Um, so make sure that you're watching it every day or every couple of days. Cause, um, uh, you know, it, it, it can, it can go fast. So just make sure that you're paying attention to it. Um, and, and uh, so make sure you do your research b before you really spend lots of money on there. But I mean, we've got some clients that literally spend over a hundred and I think $130,000 was what we spent last month on for one of our clients on advertising. So they spent 130,000 and I think we sold almost half a million um, that month. So, you know, that's the, the ROI that you can get um, on, on the ads front. So, um, so yeah, so we can dive more into it at a later time, but, uh, hopefully that's at least, uh, uh an overview uh, that you, <laughs> you should, you should try it. You should definitely try it. So I'll stop yammering. <laughs> Jeff really likes paid per click ads in case you guys couldn't notice, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it really is an in-depth thing and we can definitely dive more into it at, at a later date, but that's kind of a cool little overdue, but, um, so yeah, so next we're going to kind of talk about, uh, have a plan for the holidays. So I think a lot of sellers make the mistake where they're like, okay, uh, Amazon's going to get a ton of traffic without me, without me doing anything. So I'm just going to rely on that. And to us, that is the worst thing you can do. It, it really is a time to get aggressive. This is the time to spend more money. This is the time to try out new strategies because the traffic is there. The extra traffic is there from Amazon. They're supplying it. And yes, your, your sales will increase naturally without changes, but to really capitalize on this time, it's important to test different things out. So, you know, like I said already, we run promotions during this time. Obviously you, you need to be running promotions. You need to try to get lightning deals if that's possible. Those lightning deals are a little bit of a premium price um, during that time, but you know, try to get them, uh, you know, do keyword changes, see if there's other, you know, broaden your keywords, see if there's other keywords you could be targeting, you know, kind of really focus on that. And then, you know, what ad changes do I need to make? Um, a lot of the times clients will bump up their ad budget during this time. This cause the traffic, the extra traffic's there. So you need extra money in your budget to make sure you're capturing that traffic. Uh, another thing, this is actually my favorite clients. Uh, this last holiday is one of the things we had is we like, we want, we asked for holiday lifestyle images. So for example, um, you know, one of our yoga mat clients, uh, they had pictures of the yoga mat underneath the Christmas tree. Uh, you know, there's, there's a, uh, during Thanksgiving, you know, we had a beverage company and it, you know, featured the Turkey with the coffee behind it, you know, so capitalizing on those holiday times is key with images because, you know, show the customer how your product fits into the holidays. I mean, especially like Christmas and, you know, during those times, those are key times that people are shopping. Obviously we know that, but you want to show them this product fits to what you want. Uh, another time, this is, you know, this is a good time to also push traffic from Facebook. Uh, you know, one key thing to think about is people are last minute shoppers. Your site most likely can't fulfill things fast enough to get it there in time for Christmas, right? So one thing a lot of clients do and a lot of people we've talked to at conferences and stuff is they push a lot of, you know, Facebook traffic to Amazon towards closer to the holidays because people want to do one day shipping. They want to get it there next day because they forgot. So a lot of the times you'll see people pushing traffic to Amazon to you know, catch those last minute shoppers. So that's another thing to consider. And lastly, make sure your inventory is prepared. The last thing you want is to sell out on Black Friday or sell out on Prime Day and lose 
extra sales, right? I mean, obviously it would be super cool if like, you know, you're getting so much traffic that you're selling through inventory, but at the same time you're missing out, you know, the next day. So really make sure you're, you know, looking forward to the future for inventory and really, you know, sending in extra if possible. So I think that covers it all. We still don't know the day for prime day. I'm pretty sure. I don't think they've unveiled it yet, which is kind of funny because it should be like a month away, but prime day is a, a crucial one. Uh, you know, they say that more people shop on Amazon on prime day than they do on black Friday, which is crazy. So prime day would be the next one where you want to test out some of these things. You want to maybe look into different lifestyle images of, you know, someone giving it to someone as a present, you know, something like that. It's, it's pretty cool to test these little strategies out. So nice. Yeah, I think Prime Day, the last couple of years has fallen around July 12th or July 11th. Right. So you could probably at least assume it's going to be around that time frame. So make sure that you have inventory ready to go. Um, one other inventory strategy that I just thought of, as you mentioned that, Jenna, was um, if you do ever run out of stock in FBA, like say you only had a thousand units and you sold through all of it on Prime Day, by two o'clock and you're like, oh crap, I'm, you know, we're, we're out of stock. Well, what you can do is set up um, another listing. So you, you set up basically a duplicate listing of the same product, but it's called Merchant Fulfilled. Um, so that's what we call FBM, Fulfilled by Merchant. And that's where you fulfill it out of, you know, your not Amazon's warehouse. So wherever you have inventory that's not in Amazon, maybe you have another warehouse in Los Angeles that you use a third party warehouse, or maybe it's in your garage. I don't know where it is, but um, if you have other extra inventory that's available to sell, um, that's what we do for most of our clients is we set up a backup listing that's called fulfilled by merchants so that you can still take those orders. And then the warehouse just has to fulfill those orders, you know, by using normal shipping labels like USPS or UPS or FedEx. Um, so that's another just backup option. Um, if you're using multiple warehouses, um, and then another a little bit more advanced one, if you run completely out of stock, even in Los Angeles, cause let's say you ordered from China or wherever and the inventory is not going to arrive. It's estimated to arrive say next Tuesday on, on say, uh, I don't know what month or year it is, but say it was June 16th is when you're estimating that the inventory should arrive. You can take pre-orders on Amazon. A lot of people don't know this, but you can take pre-orders up to 30 days in advance um, using FBM fulfilled by merchant. So let's say today's the 8th of June. And then we know that June 16th, we're estimated to get our, you know, a, a thousand units in stock. So what I would do is, is uh, put an in stock date, or I think it's called a restock date in Amazon, but put it like at least 10 days after your estimated in stock date to account for possible delays and shipment times. So just make sure you have a buffer. So I would maybe say, tell Amazon, hey, I'm gonna be in stock June 26th. And then that way people can, when they go to your page, they're gonna say, oh, I really want this product, but it says it's not in stock until June 26th, but some people will order. I mean, it happens to us all the time. Um, and then you can continue taking orders, selling through your container of goods before it even arrives in the country. So um, that's just another possible thing to, to look into. Um, and if you have to do that and you can't figure it out, just send us an email and we'll, we'll point you to where, where that setting is uh, in Amazon. Um, yeah. Okay. So now I'll talk about, um, Facebook. So, um, obviously a lot, a lot of people's concerns are always, oh, well, I don't want Amazon to own my customers because technically they do. Um, but there are ways to pull them off of Amazon and, and that's, that is what you want to do because you do want to try to, um, you know, actually own the customer yourself, you know, and have their email or have their Facebook or be able to retarget them or reconnect with them outside of Amazon. Um, that helps you build assets in your business that you can then remarket to. And we, we recommend that for all of our clients and we help our clients to do that because um, that helps them in the long run. So 
uh, if you didn't know already, um, so, some people don't don't know this, but you can upload your Amazon customer list to Facebook to the Facebook advertising um, portal. Um, so you go to the Facebook advertising, you say upload customer list, or, or I forget the exact terminology, but when you upload it, uh, Facebook can take the data from Amazon. So Amazon gives you things like name, first and last name, address, zip code, stuff like that. Amazon, or sorry, Facebook will match up the, you know, that list with their database of Facebook users because, you know, almost everybody's on Facebook. And Facebook can usually match, I think, around 50 to 70% of the Amazon customers limited data that you have. They can match it and estimate, hey, that's John, you know, Tucker from South Dakota. And then they say, we have a John Tucker from South Dakota. And then they say, boom. And then they add them to your Facebook list so that you can now retarget them with an ad. So may maybe around half of your Amazon customers, just by uploading it to Facebook, you can have a list. So some of our clients, you know, they have 50,000 customers from Amazon. And then, so that's 25,000 people that they can now retarget directly with ads um, on Facebook, um, which they do. And they do very well, especially if you have like a recurring type of product um, or, or anything to resell them um, at a later date. So that's number one is directly retargeting them. The second, and, and which I think is almost even cooler, if let's say you upload your list of let's just say example, you have now 25,000 people, or, or it doesn't matter how big it is, even if it was a thousand people, but let's say you upload 25,000 people um, that, that Facebook matches, and that's your audience, and then you can tell Facebook and say, hey, Facebook, I want to make what, what they call a lookalike audience off of that. So what they do, and, and you know, like if you need help, again, we can, we can help point you to that area, um, but it, you just tell M or Facebook to make a lookalike audience. And what they're going to do is they're going to look at all the demographics and info and attributes of those 25,000 people. And then you tell Facebook, I want you to make a list, Facebook, of a million people that look and, you know, and have similar attributes and similar ages and, and similar, you know, whatever, what they're interested in on Facebook. They'll make a, a list of a million people that are actually very similar to those people as far as like who they are and their buying habits and, and whatnot. Um, like maybe they're dog, dog lovers, right? And so they're going to match to other dog lovers out there, but they'll, they'll, they'll come up with a list of a million dog lovers that you can, you know, run ads to. And those are brand new prospects that you have not ever sold to have probably never heard of you before and you can get in front of them. Um, so it, it really is, um, an incredible thing that that Facebook has that's why they're you know one of the most powerful advertisers in the world because they have more data than anybody um, I think so um, and then just to take it one level further is if you take your repeat customers on Amazon let's say you had you know 2,000 repeat customers that have bought from you at least two times well, those are like your, you know, those are your golden gooses. Those are your ideal customers that really love you. So if you, you tell Amazon or Facebook to make a look like off of those people because um, th those will be like even more laser targeted. Um, so, yeah, so that is, um, that's it. I mean, if you can do those things or if you, if you want to hire somebody that is a Facebook expert, they can help you do all of this stuff. Um, if you just tell them what you want or show them this slide here and they'll, they'll, they'll know, they should know what to do. Um, so it really is a, a really powerful uh, strategy um, or multitude of strategies if you can do that. So hopefully that is helpful. Okay, yeah. next. Nice, okay, that's it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, if you want the slides, I don't know if it's going to be uploaded to the website or not. Um, so you feel free to email us if you want to. We can uh, uh, email you the slides. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, feel free to shoot us questions. We're happy to, to help out. Hey, Jeff and Jenna, it's Tracy. Oh, hey, Tracy. Hey, Tracy. How are you? 
Good. How are you? Good. Um, I am so glad you guys did that holiday section right there because next week is our holiday recording. So we have a lot of office hours we're going over holiday design and color trends. And we're going to do a little bit on seasonal product strategies from inventory management and other things. Um, and we've, uh, we're going to be recording with both Brenda and Tim Bush. So Tim Bush is going to give us the sort of retail view of what Black Friday really looks like. So I'm so glad you guys suggested some of those things and they are so important. So I'm going to make sure to highlight that again on our, when we put all those holiday episodes up together. So I might just break out that little uh, section for, for <laughs> you and put it as a separate video because it's so good. Um, but Tell me, how much time do you guys spend or how far in advance when you're planning a fourth quarter holiday promotion program and the whole ads and all the things that you're going to do and the inventory levels you think you need, how far in advance do you guys plan with your clients? Uh, I could take this one. Uh, it, it depends on, one, it's always good to know your lead times for product. So some of our clients have literally like, five month lead times. They just have products that take a long time to make. And so obviously for that client, we have to do it at least, you know, six, seven, eight months in advance. So they're, they're constantly ordering, um, in advance, but for some clients that just have, you know, a two week lead time, if they're, if they have a U.S. supplier or something like that, then, you know, that really can, can change, uh, change it. So that's number one is the Know, know your delivery times um, and your lead times and account for errors and account for Chinese New Year. If you're ordering from China, uh, that's the whole month of February. China just, you know, uh, takes a nap and doesn't work at all. And, and, <laughs> We've got a whole article on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll do that one. I'll do one as we get closer to that. But a big issue that we have is, uh, is most people don't plan far enough. Place. So we place all of our orders for Chinese New Year in October. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing that, and it doesn't even matter your lead time, if, you know, if your lead time's extended, you should be earlier than that. But that's mm -hmm. for pretty much standard lead time of like four to six week lead times. We plan in October with our clients. So yeah, mm -hmm. no, I, I didn't really realize, and I'm so glad you guys pointed that out, that that lead time is actually harder for it than what you guys have to do on your end. And so, oh, so, so critical. I love that. So my second question on, on that is, is when, when you're going to launch a product, really how far in advance do you guys like to plan for that? Mm -hmm. hmm. um, I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, just like launching a product. Are you talking about getting inventory in or more of like the sales strategy side of it? The sales strategy side of it. Because I mean, I know you can't do much till you're like got your listing up. So, right. but really how much, how much is necessary minimum to really be, to, you know, to have a good sales plan? I mean, I think a month is like the, the good idea about it, you know, coming up with the strategy you're going to do. Cause I mean, with, you know, certain clients, they have really good assets with email marketing, with their Facebook. So, you know, coming up with that strategy and then implementing that strategy, you know, I'd say around a month, three weeks, two weeks, you know, around there, I'd say, uh, Jeff, do you agree with, you know, launching the product and getting those sales strategies in place? Yeah, at, at a minimum, if you can try to try to plan that out and even have the listings built on Amazon and on your website, you know, at least a few weeks in advance. But like we've got some clients and some of our most successful clients, especially ones that do like Kickstarters, um, then the, if you can do it five months in advance and start building that audience and building that list and, and, and promoting that, hey, this product's coming in, you know, October and building that list and the, the waiting list or the early bird list. And, you know, the earlier you can do it, the more proactive, um, it's obviously advantageous to do that. Great, great. Well, I have one question that was submitted in that I really want to make sure we get to here. And that is um, because a lot of people on here are product launching, right? So their product's not even done yet. But um, the, so the question was, what are examples of extra value you can add to a marketing insert? And I love that question because, I mean, this is something we ought to think about. And if we don't even know our sales plan, it's going to be a little hard to plan what we put on that insert. And once you print it, you're done you, until you burn through all that inventory. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, a couple of my favorite like values that people add is, you know, 
eBooks. I think they are so cool. Uh, you know, like recipe books, if you're a supplement company, a recipe book would be cool or, you know, YouTube videos, like just lead them to a YouTube, um, link and have them check out, you know, different products you have or have them, you know, see how the product is used. I think those are great values to add. Uh, Jeff, can you think of any others? Uh, yeah, it just totally depends. Those, those are all really great. It just depends on, on what, who your customer is. So what market you're in. So, you know, some people like, you've got a client that has like a it's for back pain and, and stuff like that. And they have a, one of their complimentary products is a guided meditation because that, that helps them as they're using the product. That's a complimentary thing. So it's like finding who is your customer? Why are they buying your product? So what else could they use? What are their pain points? If they're a, you know, if there's someone that has back pain, what, what other things could help them with back pain? Maybe it's a stretching exercises thing from a chiropractor or, you know, it, it just depends on what would be of value to your customer. Oh, thank you for that. That is so important. And I think that, you know, anything where you can drive people off of, you know, off of Amazon, right? So that's the goal there. So drive them to enter their email address into you, whatever that might be that you think is going to appeal to them the most. That's obviously the most important thing to get on that marketing insert. Mm -hmm. So I think we have, we have a, a, coffee related company and um they have some fantastic information on like toxins in your coffee beans and stuff like that and i mean they don't make coffee beans per se but they have um all that information on their site and i can imagine that someone who cares about that or is passionate about that drives to it which then drives them to their best client profile mm -hmm. so it's it you know even if only you know half, uh, you know, 5% or something of the Amazon customers come to it. It's the 5% that are most passionate about what they care about building a community around. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's an interesting strategy is sort of like you're now narrow, narrowing it at the same time. So, yeah, I mean, that's how bullet, bulletproof was, was blew up. Right. I mean, they, right. they talked about all that stuff and, and had the science behind it. And they went after a, a micro niche of, of coffee lovers and health lovers and, like they just, and he had a blog and an audience before launching coffee, you know, so he had a following before. So he launched his product six years before launching it. Right. Yeah, exactly. When he, when he came out with it, he was already an influencer and, and, you know, obviously he's had a great success. So, well, thank you guys so much for, for today. I, we appreciate it. And um, I just want to remind everyone that you, uh, we will put the slides into the blog post. The blog posts are going up um, usually within a week or so of the video, but um, I think this one's going to be a little delayed because we have our big holiday week. So it's like bumping everything. So it'll probably be after the 4th of July. <laughs> but, um, but we've got um, also uh, lots of really great uh, links and other things of all the things that you talk about we've been putting into the blog post. So we really want people to go there and check that out. Um, and then also don't forget to hit Jeff and Jenna's profile because you can find out all kinds of information. If you can't remember, you didn't write this email address down, you can just go straight there and find them instantly. So, yeah. So thanks guys. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs>